The president didn't order an end to the Russia investigation, now did he? Now we have a lot of legal and historical illiterates posing as TV hosts and commentators like Jeffrey Tubin, <laughs> and among others. Let me be very specific. Richard Nixon during Watergate ordered the attorney general to file the, fire the special prosecutor, he refused. Then he ordered the deputy attorney general to fire the special prosecutor and he refused. Here, the deputy attorney general writes a memorandum urging the attorney general and the president to fire the FBI director. The attorney general attaches it to a letter, endorses it, and the president of the United States fires him. It has nothing to do with Watergate, but of course the media and the Democrats, one and the same, wanted to deal with Watergate. The president did not order in any respect an end to the Russian investigation. But I have a couple questions, if I might, for Chuck Schumer, who is the leading demagogue in all this. Tell me something, Mr. Schumer. Can you name a single Russian, just one, who colluded with Donald Trump and his campaign? Just give us one. One, you got intelligence committees who've been investigating, you've had this interminable federal investigation that's gone on, let's have it. Now, I will have another question for Mr. Schumer. You like these independent special prosecutors. Sean, have you noticed they all use the same phrases? We can't trust the Justice Department to investigate. They can't even name the FBI agents who are involved in this investigation. I'm sure they are career agents that'll do their job, regardless of who the FBI director is. But Mr. Schumer likes these independent special prosecutors. Let me ask you something, sir. Do you support an independent special prosecutor for Hillary Clinton and her multiple violations of the Espionage Act? Do you support an independent special prosecutor for the Obama administration's surveillance and unmasking of Trump transition team members and God knows who else? The the Israeli ambassador was surveilled. The, the prime minister of Israel was surveilled. Members of Congress were surveilled. Jewish leaders and Jewish groups were surveilled. How about an independent investigation of that? Got another one, Mr. Schumer. How about an independent special prosecutor to investigate this whole seedy Iranian deal with the secret deals, the ransom payments, the release of terrorists that we find out after the fact? Let me tell you what's going on here, Sean. The president of the United States followed the Constitution, followed the law, and followed the advice of a deputy attorney general who won 94 to 6 his confirmation on April 25th. That means almost every single Democrat voted for him. You want to know why? The guy doesn't have a political bone in his body. He's worked for Bill Clinton. He's worked for George Bush. He is a career public integrity prosecutor, a criminal prosecutor. He's been an assistant U.S. attorney and a U.S. attorney. And Sean, the two big left-wing senators from Maryland went to his confirmation hearing, introduced him, and urged the committee to support him for deputy attorney general. This man comes into the Justice Department, he hears what Schumer has said, he hears what Clinton has said, and he has seen with his own eyes what Comey did. Then he watches Comey's testimony the week before, he, uh, last week, in which Comey doubles down Mark. on his outrageous behavior, and what happens? He writes a memo to the Attorney General and says, Mr. Attorney General, this director of the FBI, I have to deal with him, he's my direct report. I don't trust him, he needs to go. And the President of the United States in the end did exactly the right thing. He did what Barack Obama didn't have the courage to do, which is to remove an FBI director that didn't have the temperament to be an FBI director. Well said. Let's talk about this from the legal point of view. And you uh, studied the Constitution your entire life. You were Ed Meese's chief of staff when he was the Attorney General of the United States. When we talk about, Mark, equal justice under the law, when we talk about a two-tier justice system, it is overwhelming and incontrovertible the evidence that Hillary Clinton violated numerous laws, committed numerous felonies, and that's just on the email server scandal. The Uranium One deal in which you mentioned, the Clinton Foundation, all the, she signed off 20% of America's uranium going to Vladimir Putin. Now there's a Russian conspiracy. And then of course General Flynn, the one law we know was broken was when this man was, okay, incidentally surveilled, but then unmasked, and then the surveillance leaked, and his entire reputation destroyed. That's a felony under the Espionage Act. For the average person that is maybe hearing some of these tinfoil hat conspiracy theorists, what does it mean to this country if we have a two-tier justice system and we don't have equal justice under the law? Well, the people of this country need to understand what the President of the United States did was take the advice of a career prosecutor 
who was confirmed 94 to 6 by the United States Senate and backed by almost every Democrat. And that career prosecutor, as opposed to Chuck Schumer, who is a career political hack demagogue, that career prosecutor looked at this case, and I might add, James Comey is under investigation by the Inspector General of the Department of Justice, too. That career prosecutor, who's now the Deputy Attorney General, nonpartisan, nonpolitical, looked at what Comey had done. He got in there April 25th. And by the way, I find it fascinating that Democrats say, why did he act now? The same Democrats who have stonewalled the confirmation of almost all of the president's cabinet selections, let alone his second tier cabinet selections, finally this outstanding choice for deputy attorney general is confirmed two weeks ago. All and right, then he looks have... at this situation and he says, this man needs to be removed. The answer is the president followed the Constitution and Chuck Schumer right. is undermining the Constitution.